Are you ready to party? Let's go. <laughs> My beautiful people, welcome back to our October monthly review. We have myself, Tim Fisher. We Evan have Nelson. Evan Nelson. Jordan Jimmyola. And we have our Hi. camera operator. Thank you. Sam is not here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. One day you'll get named. We'll see. You got to earn it. Um, <laughs> Sam, Sam is not here tonight. He's with family. Sam, we love you. We miss you. Uh, family first, dude. We can't wait to have you back on. It's all good. But anyways, to get started, guys, I want to say uh, nice shirts. Yes. Yeah. I think we... What do we want to call this? It's like Hawaiian shirt Friday or whatever? <laughs> you know, I... Fun Friday. Yeah. Fun know. Friday. Yeah. Is today Friday? Yes. Yeah, it's today's Friday. Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. a weird question. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, well, not only that, I mean... Yeah, because you came in... But we got to talk about your hat real quick. Oh. Show, show everyone your hat. Yes. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Not the <laughs> hat you're wearing. <laughs> no, not this one. Uh, which I do like this hat. This hat is what I was trying to wear, but Woo! it doesn't fit with the uh, the headphones on. It was my grandfather's. Uh, rest in peace, Grandpa. I'm sure you'd think this is crazy, what I'm doing right now. <laughs> We're starting real heavy. Yeah. Uh, for Grandpa. For Grandpa. Hey, cheers. Up in the cheers. Air. cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. My goodness. It's funny because my grandpa had the sa almost the same exact hat. Like, it is very similar. So I don't know what's up with the... I just We just should just call that Grandpa hats. Like, it, because It is a Grandpa hat, for yeah. sure. I like it. 100%. I mean, it's white people shit, but yeah, that's cool, guys. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is right here. Ah, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. No, I'm totally kidding. Well, I mean, people who wore that <laughs> owned my family members, but whatever. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I see where you went with that. Okay, uh, I was like, well, then uh, my grandpa was Lebanese, so there's no way that lineage oh, shit, uh, no, was like an idiot. anything. So I have no way around that. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> fun story about my grandfather, real quick. Uh, he was a very kind of stoic guy, right? Didn't say a whole lot, uh, unless it was like, he had a real strong conviction about it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, one, I was a teenager at the time and as he got older, you know, he was a little bit looser with the things that he says, like most old people. <laughs> and, uh, and again, so like I said, reserved, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So we were sitting there talking, it was like a holiday or something. <laughs> And he was asking about, uh, I was like, oh, you dating anyone, you know? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm hanging out with this one person. And, uh, he leans over and goes, is it going good? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, does she put out? <laughs> <laughs> and I was young enough to where I was like, man, that's a weird question. <laughs> you know, it's like I look at this person as like, uh, like you know, if you say a curse word, he'll be like, <clears throat> You know, yeah, you shouldn't well, say that. Well, you look up. To, yeah, you're kidding. You know, you're so to, when he said that to me, I laughed really hard. Yeah, you know? <laughs> you're not and, uh, used to hearing that from your grandpa. That, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, shout out grandpa. Dude, Man, let's go. That reminds me of my grandpa. Like when, uh, like I was back east, and like uh, he dropped us off at the airport, like me and my little brother, because we were out there for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And um, and so on, like the way back, like he like he took us uh, all the way up to like the like the security um, like uh, point checkpoint, but. Uh, yeah, like the like he made sure to like like as soon as like we were getting there, he's like said very uh, quite loudly for everyone to hear. He's like, "All right, now boys, remember what I told you: when in doubt, pull out." And, uh, and I was like, oh. out, "Out of nowhere, out of nowhere." <laughs> oh man, I was like, "Pat," I like I was like, "Pat's like," and, uh, and then like there was a guy reading a newspaper and all that, and he just like looks up like, "Who? What the heck?" And, uh, okay, <laughs> so this is from yeah. a guy's perspective. Um, Sam number two, who's controlling our cameras right now. <laughs> um, Sam number two is a female. Were you talked to this way by grandparents or family? Ever talking to you like that? Never. Good talk. All yeah. right. Very good. <laughs> All right. One well, word answers. Thank you. I guess that's what makes those situations stand out some more because it was uncharacteristic right, right. of a comment, you know, and you're like, oh, uh, that's funny. Now, looking back at it now, I'm like, it's hilarious because knowing him, you know what I mean? Like, right. just was never that way. Okay, so, so let's talk about Whereas, like, my other grandfather, he for sure would ask that question. <laughs> okay, do you think your grandfathers would have said that to you if you were uh, females? No. No. Because I want to talk to a lot, too. Like, if oh, I have little actually, girls, I'm going to talk to them that way. Actually, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> actually, Keep it real, you know, I'd be like, "Don't do that shit." Yeah. No, no, my pap doesn't have a filter. Like he, he'll just say wild shit all the time. You know, what? but yeah. no, I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, I could see my other grandfather being like, "You just don't want to be a whore." <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. You know, he was a very blunt person. Yeah, so I could see that. But it'd be tactful, but still like, mm, we're in a it's crowd. Just different, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. he just said it to the, like he's like, like oh, I want to see if I could get a rise out of them and all. That. And it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna say whatever I'm gonna say and all. That. And like uh, my my mom and my aunt says like, you can't take him anywhere. He's gonna just say wild shit. 
<laughs> that's the old guy I want to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, there's crazy Tim against in this front porch. Hey, you little fuckers. Crazy yeah, like, Tim. Get off my lawn. Yeah, all the kids at school, they always got to run by Fisher's house, dude. I love that. Oh. Just chilling They're out. like, don't make eye contact. Old man yeah. Fisher over there. And then the one kid is brave enough to come talk to me. Be like, why are you like that? I'm just kidding, kid. You want some candy? Like, you want to hang out? Yeah, I'd be you know? like, <laughs> start giving him money. Like, like next thing you know, bucks, he's like your best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> saying what's up. <laughs> he's that one kid who had the guts to say something to the mean old guy. Now he's making money, dude. That's how it starts. Next thing you know, you're gonna have a line of kids down the street. Oh, Everyone's gonna be your friend. You're basically running the neighborhood. Yep. You're like, All right, kids, <laughs> we're taking down Christmas lights this you're year. You're like the Jack Nicholson in The Departed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good character. Very, Very good, character. good character. Well, let's yeah. get this uh, monthly review started, my dudes. Right on. Okay, you know what we're going to start with? Let's start with Tom Brady. Oh, it, boy. You two are big sports yeah. guys, so I'm going to let one of you take the reins on All this. All right, who, who do you want to start? You or me? I don't know. You're probably more of a Brady fan than I am. Oh, no. Fuck Brady. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just okay. joking. I was a, that was also <laughs> that worked a joke. out really good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> joke. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. I mean, again, as a football player, as a fan of football, like, I can't argue that, like, you know, he's, like, he's the greatest. I hate to say that. He's the greatest oh. quarterback. He's very good at what he does. Yes. Come on. Yeah. You know he's, he's got enough rings to, to show for <laughs> yeah. it. You know, marriage. <laughs> oh, oh, ring that bell. Oh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> I don't feel bad for you. Ooh, yeah. Tommy. Yeah, but it seems, Tommy okay, boy. from what I have seen and what I have read, which is not a crazy amount, but it seems like... His wife, which is mm -hmm. um, Giselle. Yes. She's done because he is putting the game before his family. He yes. said he's going to do one thing, he does another, right? 100%. I mean, and it goes to show you, okay? Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, listen to me. If Tom Brady is worth millions of dollars and he can't even keep a woman happy, there is no hope. <laughs> okay? <laughs> We're just going to settle this right now. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are. You're never going to make him happy. I mean, he's a good-looking dude too. So uh, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and he is he's like way wine. hotter as he gets older. It's yeah, weird. The Botox totally on him. button shit going on. But uh, my, look, my opinion on this is, and I, you know, to be Sorry, very that was a delayed, right? No, it's really funny. <laughs> um, it's. I think it's sad because to me, you see two people who have it all. Right? She she makes more than he does, but this guy seems like he's so passionate and almost addicted to the game. Like it's almost his everything that he's willing to sacrifice a marriage over it. And right. I, I kind of laugh to myself when I see his record this season right now. Like, oh, look at that. Now, allegedly, right? Maybe right. It's, there could be other things behind the scenes. We don't right. know. Yeah. We don't know if she had a hand in this, if he has, somebody cheated, somebody not cheated. We don't know. Or maybe it was on the rocks before. But from what we see, it's like he said he was going to retire. He did it and he came back. Right. right. He did and he came back. Yeah. It probably made her very upset. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when's enough enough? Like, you gave up your family and now look at your, your record for this year. It's shit. Right. Well, actually, oh. I have a couple of things. So there's uh, memes going around and um, it was great because it all started in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and uh, my Pittsburgh, team dude, my, my team is uh, sucking real hard this year. But um, but anyways, it was a great... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't want to rig to that one. But, <laughs> 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 but like, uh, there's a meme going around of like, you know, seeing like Tom Brady like yelling uh, to his offensive linemen um, on the sidelines and then like, the little caption is like, I did not ruin my marriage just to get beaten by Kenny fucking Pickett. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yes, you did. Dude. No, I, but well, isn't there, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. So like, the whole entire thing with like the, like I agree with you as far as like, you know, you, like you had a 22 year long career. You've accomplished everything that you could accomplish and all that. There's nothing for you, nothing left for you to prove. And like then, like you should like honestly, he should have just retired uh, when he won the Super Bowl. They went on high, yeah. But again, like when he decided to retire, again, we're like we're all assuming from the outside looking in that it's like okay, he made a promise to his family that it's like okay, I'm done. I'm um, I'm gonna come like I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna like be with the family more and uh, uh, be more part of the family because again, being a football player and being a star football player for that many years is like there's so much sacrifice that not only the player but the player's family has to go good through. Point. Right, very good point. So again, like um, for him to like kind of go back on that prob promise allegedly and everything, it's like yeah, it's like it's on him. Now again. Like, we don't know what else is going on. So maybe, again, it's a big part of the divorce. But at the same time, you want to think about it, It's like, yeah, th maybe there's a lot of other shit that we just don't know about that's going in. And right. maybe that, like, he decided to go in because maybe Giselle, again, like, I'm, like I, I don't want to, like, point blame and everything. But it's like maybe, like, again, 
hypothetically, maybe that like Giselle and him were having things, and he's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm gonna go back and play football and everything, and then that's what kind of was the camel that struck the uh, yeah. like, uh, camel's back, you know. The straw, straw that broke, broke the camel's camel. back. Got yeah, you. That, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Strike the of the back. I like to strike at the match like, hey, of the back man. of the camel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, you know, but yeah, it's like the, like, but the whole entire thing is like, yeah, like, if it is like, again, point, like, like face value, if he made the promise to his family and then he goes back on that promise, again, you're not a man of your word. And then like, obviously like it's, it's a sad thing to happen, but it's like, you know, you reap what you sow. Yeah. I don't feel bad for Tom Brady in the slightest. Fuck and, Tom Brady. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, and all, and it has nothing to do with the career. The career yeah. is awesome. Unreplicated. It will not be broken for at least for a long, long time. Right. And, uh, having said that, you know, it's like exact all the things you just said. Because until proven and otherwise, right. like that's what the story is, and that's a very believable story. Because mm -hmm. um, if anyone is like known a professional athlete, and especially like you said, like someone at that, that's like the top of the top. That's as high as it goes. Yeah. The 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 fame, the high caliber ability, right. the the to do it for so long. Too. Yeah, the longevity in that is twenty twenty two years. Twenty two years, and you know, like those people to be like that invest so much time, so much time away from their families. And again, right. It's like, when you talk about it, it's like, yeah, but that's your choice. You've been doing it for 22 years. You're worth fucking more money than you know what to do with. Right. And it's like, why don't you take a step back and enjoy the Go out. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm again, like, Maybe something's going on. Maybe Giselle met somebody or did something. Which I have, I want to say something real quick Ooh. at the at the end of this. No, no, it's not. It's not like like conspiratorial right. news. Yeah. It was just something funny that I saw. But um, you know, it's like we, it's like I get it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like she, it's like being married to someone who's never there. You right. know what I mean? And like you know, saying that actually with this profession is kind of funny because I feel like I'm like that a lot too. But oh my God. Um, but. You know, this, you know, when they're gone, they're gone for like months at a time and they're like, you know, do training camps and OTAs and all that stuff. There's so much vested where that would suck for 22 years. Like yeah. you're missing, you're missing tons of stuff, um, in those, in those lives, you know, but the other side of it is that like, like, fuck dude, you're making this decision. Just chill. You know? Yeah. I don't know. No, I think that's like, and then there's also that pressure of like, it's like, he doesn't know how to cope with not having football in his life. Right. Cause like he's, it's been in his life. Like he's been a professional football player for almost, uh, almost longer than he has been alive. Dude. So, uh, and I was going to say like, if you've met anybody that plays a professional sport, not, and it's not everybody, but there's, right. but the majority of those types of people, that's their identity that, yeah. And it's like, they're competitive with, every aspect of life right like everything is like you know what i mean i so, don't hang out with people like that yeah, yeah i can't yeah, like yeah. there's it's yeah. not fun and no. not not that and, the, and again i don't mean all of them you know what i mean it's like my brother was a pro ball player but he like was very chill you know what i mean but right. like meeting other people it's just everything's like this crazy competition throughout all aspects of life so imagine that for 22 years you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's like, and again, I'm not saying that like, it's a good thing, you know, but if they're both like terribly unhappy, right. You know what I mean? Like she's only, how many more years has she got before like, she's like super relevant? You know what I mean? Like right. she's, you basically put her career on hold and she's worth $350 million. Yeah. Dude, she'd have to pay him alimony. She would have to That's pay him crazy. alimony. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's so awesome. I love it. And you know it. what? Tom Brady would get alimony <laughs> oh, yeah. from his rich yeah. supermodel wife. Yeah, yeah. I need you know $60,000 I mean? a month. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. The way we've been living, you know. Well, I think it's a good lesson. Um, I think it goes not just with professional sports, but any job or any hobby that you're into. And this is something I learned early in life because I've lost relationships over it. It's like, you know, he is a millionaire. I think all of us would be love to be a millionaire a hundred times over, 100%. whatever it may be. Yes, um, but it, the reality is, when our time is up on this earth, you ain't taking any of your possessions and that money with you. Nope, it's, you can't. You know, your the things that you're gonna hold dear to you is your family mm -hmm. and your wife, your loved ones, and grandkids. Because at the end of your life, and we've seen this a lot in our career, I've seen a lot of people pass away in the job that I do. And not once have I ever heard any of them say, I wish I had more money. I wish I had another promotion or a better job. It was always, I wish I had more time, more time with my family, more time with my wife or my husband. Yeah. And I think if that is the truth, that um, 
you know, his marriage is lost, our family's broken up and divorced because of football, I think he's really going to regret that later on in life. Yeah. Big time. Oh. Now, you don't just go and get a divorce out of nowhere. There's absolutely underlying issues. Mm -hmm. There's other things there that that's between them, which should never go be public. It's not our, it's someone's business. You know, people are going to want to know that, but yeah, that was building up. Mm -hmm. There's other stuff behind that. And there's, you know, whether it was football or other things that happened in the marriage, but right now it looks and appears to be like, it was like, it, it's, it's as if he chose football over his family. Right. That's uh, at least that's yeah. what media is showing you. You know. Yeah. So, and if if that is the truth, I feel bad for the guy. Yeah. There's well, no hundreds of millions of dollars that's worth going through divorce and what that's going to do to your kids. Yeah. Well, you know? it's it's funny because like in the beginning of the season, right, or like even like the preseason, right, like it was almost as if it was glorified that he was coming back for another season. Like you know, there was a commercial where like Michael Jordan was like. Yeah, I took three years off, and then I decided to come back. It's like Brady, like he took three months, and now, and it's like, and as if it was a good thing, like yeah. you know, it's like, oh man, that competitive nature and everything. Well, look, it's like now he's a celebrate. joke. Yeah, no, he's yeah, he's, he's the butt of a joke. But well, he's yeah, he's struggling this season too. But yeah. it's not all because of him. If no, we're no, really no. going to break into his gameplay, it's because their offensive yeah. line they, has had issues. They've garbage. had a bunch of garbage. Yeah. Sure. And then, like, they've had injuries, too, especially on defense. And uh, he always still looks good. And a crazy thing, I just watched, if you watch the game on Thursday, he looked he younger version of Brady. Like, he was fast. Yeah. Not running, but, like, just his movements and reads and stuff. He looks great. Well, he's a yeah. single man now, dude. Well, you know what I'm saying? He's got to get the ladies. Um, uh, he's, Look, both of those two are not going to have a problem find somebody no, oh. no they're both attractive they're both like they're both very set and like yeah. um i mean again like yeah like as far as like finding a new partner like they they're both of them are, yeah. are Listen, I, I and i'll i'll be real with you because I've, I've lived through a divorce um they are gonna have really tough times doesn't matter how much money you have. 100 percent. yeah it really doesn't matter. especially with kids involved too oh my god yeah, yeah. i think they have like three yeah it's gonna, it's gonna be, be rough it'll be weird for them because who knows where she's gonna move Mm -hmm. You know, being across the country, he's traveling all the time. I, I looked at that. And I was thinking, what a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if I'm a millionaire. That's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. It just 100%. sucks, dude. So yes. I feel bad for the family, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of lessons we learned out of that one, dude. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Giselle, though, that's what I was going to, I was going to say this earlier is that uh, they're already taking like, you can bet on the celebrity that she'll be with next. <laughs> and do you want to know who is got the best odds? Pete Davidson. No, oh, yeah. No it's way. Pete no Davidson, way. I swear to God. Yeah. It's not Brad Pitt? No. The second no. the second one up is uh, Jason Momoa. Because they're going after guys that are single, is basically Wait, Jason like, Momoa is single? Yeah. yeah. He got divorced from... Uh, he got too famous, dude. Yeah. Oh, He's a hunky God. fellow. Yeah. I think... I, yeah. Oh, he got... Damn, I His didn't know. His wife's like 10 years older it's, than Isn't that Lisa man? Tomei? Who is it? Uh, it's it's uh, Lenny Kravitz's ex-wife. Yeah. Yeah. Fe Can you imagine Fe being with Lenny Kravitz's ex? That would suck. I mean... <laughs> I'm sure they're both. You know he's getting down, bro. Lenny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, he was in yeah. some weird shit though, I bet. Yeah, yeah. man. He's no. like, put a blindfold on and <laughs> well, here, we've heard we heard from our perspective. Latin. I want to talk to Sam number two back here. What do you think about the Brady thing and how you from a female perspective? I agree. I think there's gonna be a lot of things that are behind the scenes of what media is showing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I can kind of feel for Giselle if if my significant other told me that he was going to retire, especially when he was, you know, gone working and I get it. He's providing for the family and all that good stuff. He's, tr he's trying his best, but for 22 years, that's a long time. Yeah. Um, and plus with three kids and, you know, they're getting older, uh, it's probably time for him to retire, especially to be, it's gotta be tough on a family, right? It's yeah. like Jordan said, or, or I heard this before, like with military wives and other people I know, it's like, I didn't sign up to do marriage alone. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, to raise kids and and I, I, the older I get, I you start to have more understanding and kind of see the importance of a committed relationships and, and marriage and raising children and how important it is and you know in my opinion the roles that mother and fathers play with together and separate in yeah. a, a marriage and how important it is and like you got to be there. Yeah, and his kids are what t uh, like young teens. Yeah, -teens? Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. like what they were like probably early teens to. Like pre Seven or eight or maybe. Yeah. I don't know. He's got three, I think. Yeah. God, can you imagine? And I know I'm sure they're stoked. <laughs> I'm sure they're stoked to hear their dad like retires and like, oh, yeah, yeah like get a hangout with dad. You're yeah, a right. teenager, you know? And, and so he's like, actually, I'm unretiring and all that. I'm like, yeah. dude. No, the, only time, the only time you see him is on Sunday 
mornings playing yeah. football. He just, he, maybe he hates his life outside of football. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. You never know. There, yeah. There's so many variables behind relationships. We all know how complicated women. I'm just kidding. Humans are. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We all know how. Co- <laughs> Sam too. How do you feel about that? Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But <laughs> Sam too. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Sam it. too. Sam too, man. <laughs> but we know. We all know because we, we've all had good relationships, bad ones. Jordan, you're, you know, it's like. We understand like humans are complicated and it's hard. You got two totally. people raised different ways, different beliefs, coming together as one. You know, there's so many variables in a marriage. That's why I always think too, like there's probably way more to this situation than we right. know. Yeah. So good luck to him. Yeah. But he's not gonna have a problem finding you, somebody. What if it comes out though that she's like, She's been sleeping with Pete Davidson for eight <laughs> months. You know, and Pete's just in the back just like, crushing life, I, dude. He's just like low key, he's just like, smashing goofy. like super celebrity women and then Staten Island. Man. Yeah, yeah, and then he just drops in a low key Taco Bell commercial. Have you seen that <laughs> yeah, one? Dude. He's just like, "Hey, Chalupa. I'm, Pete, I'm like, Pete Davidson. And I like chalupas. <laughs> yeah, they should call this Chalupa Bell." They're like, "Pete, stop riffing. You suck." <laughs> By the way, here's ten million dollars for your commercial. Thank you. Yeah, man. he's great. You know Pete what? wins, dude. Dude, Pete wins. Like, you know what? I like winners, and I like Pete. I do too. <laughs> he's like that low. He's like our like generation's Chevy Chase. Oh, yeah. totally. Is that kind of yeah? Like, but you got to think, dude. Like, bro, he he dated. Freaking, what's her name? Ariana Grande. Well, yes. Well, yeah. But no, I'm saying, who's the other? Oh, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian, oh, yeah. yeah. He stepped into then, that realm uh, for a minute. Then, dude, uh, they ruin every man. I mean, the, look how they, look what happened to Jenner. You know what I'm saying, dude? I mean, that's the ultimate. I got you by the what you used to call balls. <laughs> <laughs> Which I support his decision if that's what he wants to do. You know, tuck your sack I, I would back, say go for to it. be a part of that clan, it, it, it would change your life. It would be you're following their rules. They're telling you what to do. You're wearing what they say to wear. Yeah, well, everything is... is you're is, sucking uh, their it, dick. No, I'm just kidding. Or, or, yes, hand, 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 essentially. Hand. Or, or could it be that it's like the people that they end up attracting are just like off? It's true. Because, I mean... I mean, every one of them? I, I, most of them. Everyone. I mean, I mean, again, there's one that's pretty relevant right now. <laughs> Which one? Kanye. <laughs> Oh, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like he's yeah. definitely off his rock. He might have been off his rocker going into you, the relationship. Right, we'll have to talk about that one because yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I don't know. He's controversial, but I love that he speaks his mind. Also, I agree. love anyone that will speak their mind and not go with the flow. And he does not care. No, like, he doesn't all. care Dude, at all. J.P. Morgan dropped him. Like his, he's got. They also sure, dropped other Christian organizations. Of, oh no, shit. Well, he made it well with the content when he's talking about Jewish people and being in the industry and what you know. Right. I'm not going to paraphrase. He doesn't realize like the Jews run everything, by the way. Well, that's, that's not a was, bad thing to say, but no. it's like, bro, they're in charge of everything. Right, but that was the thing, right? So he doesn't care, and it's just like he's, you know. And again, I, I don't agree. Not like nothing negative, right? Right. It's just like as soon as that happened. He got dropped out of that. I mean, you're someone who has like a probably hundreds of millions of dollars in money into your banking system, and they're like, "Fuck you, we're done." Yeah, yeah, well, it's it, pretty big. Yeah, with him though, it's just like again, he's been off his med for two years and everything, and it's like he's clearly going through a manic episode, right? And it's like it's not just like this like thing. It's kind of been a lead up of like he's been saying wild shit for a while. And it's been it's like years though of like just wild shit, right? Yeah. Like where I'm like, whether you agree or not and everything, you're just like, man, dude, like you need to slow your roll a little bit, man. Like pump the brakes a little. And then uh, it's like, it, it's, it just gets to a point where like, I feel like sometimes like people think it, enough is enough, you know, yeah. like, regardless of how much, again, speaking your mind and everything. But it's just like, dude. I bet he wakes up in the morning and just goes, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take this interview, yeah, but and he, I'm going to go, fuck <sighs> grilled cheeses. I'm just going to leave it at this, because I don't... <laughs> you know what I mean? And then everyone's Tomato like, soup all the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, grilled cheeses, the worst shit I've ever eaten in my entire life. I'm sick of people acting like they like it. And like people will take that serious. Yeah. They'll right. be like... <gasps> Do you use craft singles? No, Kanye. <laughs> tell me, is it so? You know, and you're like, fucking dude, he's just another dude. You know, and like, not not taking away from look, his, look, him's. Ability. I don't want to go too far on this because we have other things we want to talk about. Oh about. shit, that's right. Sorry, but it's, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Don't be sorry. No, Thanks. I'm just saying is Kanye's not stupid. No, he's very smart and strategic at what he does. Don't think he's just run his mouth just to run his mouth. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he always comes out on top. That is if you true. look at everything, that fool always comes out on top. He's very smart about what he does. So people got to understand Hollywood's like the media. There's a reason things happen the way they do in the public eye for celebrities. 
mm-hmm. why they say and act and what they do certain times. So well, I'll leave it at that. Like he he ain't stupid, man. You just watch, dude. The next thing you'll find out is that Kanye owns like the majority shareholdings of JP Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's the kind of shit that happens for this dude. Yeah. So like I, you know what? Fucking if that's the case, go for it, man. I think that's, he's yeah, that's I think rad. he's smart. I, I I respect anyone who's always gonna speak their mind and not do what everyone else is doing. I cause let's be real, right? Most people are followers. Mm-hmm. Most people are sheep and most people live in comfort. So it's like when you see, um, it's like you see a, a like uh, you ever seen those videos or movies where people are in New York. It's a good example is um, what's the one with Keanu Reeves, um, Matrix. Matrix. Oh yeah. And you oh, see yeah. everyone walking and everyone's in black suits, but there's that one person going the other direction. Yeah. Right. Right. The powerful That's him. scene. I yeah. love. Yeah, I love that about people. I like people who break the chains and break break the norm. Right. It's like those are the ones who change things. Those are the ones who get attention for a reason. Yeah. So I respect him. I'm like, look, he may it may be controversial what he says, but it's his right to speak his mind. He's right. totally allowed to say what he wants to say. Now, is he going to pay the consequences? Absolutely. Yeah. He's paying for it now, but he's smart. I mean, is he paying he for idiot. it, though? Who cares? No, dude, he's going to kick him out of the top. thing. He's like, okay, give me my $400 well, P- billion okay. dollars back. <laughs> so, so here, here, what here's do I a good example. Money? Hey, other bank, they're going to go, <laughs> bring your shit here, Kanye. We're your dudes. Yeah, you know, Or exactly. fucking crew or whatever. Well, here's a good example, right? People... Because he pissed off so many people, they're buying his shoes to burn him. Okay? You're He's buying winning. his yeah. shoes and giving him more money, more millions, just to burn him. Yeah, you're yeah. like, please, by He's, all means, yeah. burn them all. <laughs> yeah. You got a new line dropping next yeah. summer. <laughs> it's like, like <laughs> oh, uh, we're going to bump that shipment up from six months to one month so you guys can burn some more. My yeah, new no line kidding. was Because whether you keep his shoes or burn them, he still makes his money. I, who cares? Right. Yeah, exactly. Right? So I'm like, dude, the guy's smart. The guy's oh, 100%. Smart. Anyways, okay, we're going to move on. Um, gosh, let's talk about Elon Musk, dude, and taking right. over Twitter and how, look, okay, Let on this show, in. we don't care your political views. We talk to everyone, but God dang, the left freaking had a meltdown, complete oh meltdown. God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually with that, uh, with, uh, him taking over Twitter, like the first thing he did was fire, uh, Twitter CEO, Parag Argawal and CFO, Ned Siegel. Which I love because I know Parag again, like the statements that like, he would make and all that. It's like basically they're so slanted and everything, like uh, is like slanted towards the left and all that. I'm like, yes. you're not balanced. It's like it's not like it's our company. We can do what we want. I'm like, okay, to a point, but if like you're a public square where it's like again the like again like the like speaking your mind and everything, and you're just silencing one side. Oh yeah, it's um again that's where I feel like again where like again Democrats say. But democracy and democracy dies in silence. Oh well, yeah, you're the ones that are destroying it. So well, you're trying to you know. silence everybody. Well, yeah. so uh, Twitter was suppressing the Hunter Biden laptop yes. articles, information, hundred mm-hmm. everything. And there yeah. was a lot of things that they were suppressing from the conservative side of politics, mm-hmm. which that is unfair. Right. You should be able to hear every side fairly, mm-hmm. and that wasn't happening. And the CEO, you could CFO, all you go it goes down the chain. They were making sure things were suppressed. Now that being said, they were fired. I don't feel bad for him. You know oh, how much? You know no. how much the, yeah. the 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 severance package the CEO got? Twenty five point six million dollars. Oh, that was the pack. That was his severance package. Wow. Twenty five is like twenty five point five or twenty five. But Tim, 6. what are they gonna do? <laughs> <with> money. <laughs> so actually, I think that I think that the reason why like they're crying and like you know like they had to be escorted out and everything is because. Again, like those are like legal charges of like suppressing uh, things and like messing with. Yeah. So it's like they might actually, like, yeah, they got that money, they got the bag, but they still might be in serious trouble in the future. Yeah. Which, I mean, deservedly so. Like, I mean, like, again, like you can't do that. Like, you can't be suppressing shit that needs to be like shared. And that's the, but that's the conundrum of the argument is that this is not a public utility. This is not a public. This is right. this is deemed a public forum because of how it's projected, right. but it's not technically. So that's where, like, even though I, I mean, again, like what had occurred with Twitter, I mean, fa- Facebook, a lot, a lot of social media, Google, fuck. I mean, sh- there's a lot of shit on all of them. Right. That when it came to any opposing views for whatever that organization would support, mm-hmm. they did their job in suppressing that to aid in election stuff. Right. And, you know, so again, whether you're, you know, whoever you vote for, it doesn't matter. If we're looking at this objectively, mm-hmm. it's 
If the sides were switched, it would still be a problem. Right? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. You know what yeah. I mean? So because it's like if you're going to tout your company as being um, basically, like you said, like the, uh, what do you call it, the town square right. approach to where you can go on, say what you want to say, people have access to it, they can see and share and all that stuff. Right. Then you shouldn't be able to do that shit like with what happened because the Hunter Biden thing was actually kind of a big deal. It was a it's very huge. big deal. It's and, yeah. and even if it's not true... Okay, so even if the stuff that they find and all the coke and hookers and money he's laundering through that was apparently Boy, his dad his may he loved his hookers he did he did he had a lot of videos of oh. him and his hookers yeah you know and yep. hopefully they were getting paid well because he seems kind of creepy yeah no. but um, you know it's like all that stuff dropped right before the election and normally something that big. Right would, would be would, shared a lot and like be shown like and potentially skew that party that is involved right you know which again is that bullshit too kinda but yeah. at the same time it's like again it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna say well that's not fair because if it was flipped you're like no if it was flipped that other side especially at that time would have been like hung probably annihilated. like in the front you know what completely I'm saying completely like, annihilated yeah, yeah so it's it's a it was a huge deal and the way that this actually it was very interesting the way that it panned out with Elon Musk because it was like you know he talked about wanting to buy it mm -hmm. and then when they said okay well, what's your number he gave him a high number they start the paperwork start the process he's like hey by the way I want to see how many bots you guys have yeah uh, that are out there that are actually because that controls a lot like dude there's like bot farms in like i think it's lithuania there's a couple of these like weird countries that like basically manufacture these things so they can put them on twitter and then make money for backing certain ideas right right and so it's this digital basically farm of people like going after certain shit to help skew either views or trends or whatever right so he went in there and he's like hey what's the what's the percentage and they gave him some shit number and he's like oh, i don't know so he, they investigate it they find out it's like a million times more of what they were telling him when they were trying to buy it, so he backs out. Right. But when they tried to counter, they tried to sue him for backing out, he was forced to go to court with this information. So now it's public, and now it's fact. <laughs> like, it's like the almost the best, like... It worked out so good. Bait yeah. and switch, like, shit I've ever heard of, because right. then he bought the company for a cheaper price. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> the first, the first, and the reason why, like, the first thing he did was fire those two is because oh. those two, actually... There's another person that he fired too. Like basically, like the top three people mm -hmm. in Twitter and all that. Like he fired all of them like immediately because exactly because of that. Because like he lied to us during the process and like you tried doing this stuff. And, like yeah, you're gone. Yeah. Uh, have you heard? Have you guys heard like the like list of demands that like uh, workers at Twitter are trying to like have like? Oh, <laughs> don't. No, like, I didn't hear any. Are you serious? Tell, yeah. Please tell us. Oh man, it's like it's just saying it's like we demand that like you know like um. Uh, no discrimination over like uh like again like past uh, practices pretty oh well, no no of like you know, <laughs> like, you know it's like of like race gender um like but like the big thing was like political beliefs and everything oh and like that took place <clears throat> over all the other ones yeah and I'm like I was like I'm like really and okay like, and that's like oh that like you know it's a safe environment or that like um oh like you need us to or like like you need to do this for us and like like uh or as far as like you know him cutting the workforce down because like he's literally like trimming all the fat basically oh good good and a hundred percent and yeah. like but they're saying like oh don't do that we demand that you don't do that and i'm like i'm sitting there thinking i'm like you're demanding and i'm like i'm like but what do you have to offer like what are like really that's this generation though yeah it's freaking it's like, stupid i'm like why yes it's like for you real. don't come into a job yeah. Like, especially private sector. I wouldn't even do this in the fire service. But you're not going to come in and then go straight to the top the CEO and tell him how he's going to run his company. Exactly. That's the dumbest shit I have ever seen in my entire life. It doesn't work that way. And it's yeah. a problem with this generation. It's like, what do you, like, what, uh, like, again, when you're making these demands, what are you having to offer? What are the things that you're, like, what makes you valuable to the company? Right. How about you come to work and just do the basics of your job first? Yeah. Start promoting through. Because guess what? Everyone started at the bottom. And guess what? You also, also might not like how the company's run, but it's not going to go your way. Yeah. You're not the fucking CEO. You didn't earn a spot these in. And you didn't start the company. Yeah. If you don't like it, leave. That's just how life is. I'm sorry, but that is just the yes. basics of life, man. Yes. 
There's no free handouts. It's not, I need a safe space. You're going to make your job comfortable for me, your mm-hmm. workplace. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. no, you come to work and you do what you're told and do your job and you right. go home. That's it. Yeah. People don't understand that anymore, man. Well, no, you know what? This is how you're going to run your company. This is what I demand. It's like the fuck cool. I am. Fuck how you. How about fired. you go get your last paycheck and get the <clears throat> hell out of my business? Yeah. Oh, dude. Don't it's, even... like, it's like, hey, thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, get your last check. Get the hell out. Yeah, exactly. And uh, fuck you. <laughs> okay. well, it's too many, I'm gonna, it's too many snowflakes now. Yeah. There's too many people that don't want to work. They don't want to put the hard work in. Yeah. They don't want to start from the bottom. People don't understand as well, like a lot of younger people, you're going to eat a shit sandwich whenever you start somewhere new. Right. It doesn't matter. We all started at the freaking bottom. Yeah. That's how life works. You want to get to the top and you want to own the company or be the CEO or be a chief. Right. You can't do that right away, right away without being at the bottom and building that experience right. from working your way up. Yeah. Whether it be starting as the busboy or mopping floors all the way to working in the mailroom to running the machines to now you're an office manager to boom, now you're CFO because... You've hit every position. You right. understand that that 10 to 15 years of work you put in now prepped you to be the leader you need to be to run a company. Right. Now, but that's not understood. No, now oh. I, I agree with all of that. Now, the only only little pushback I have is because like, I've experienced some of it too with like uh, like the pandemic and coming back to the place where I worked before the pandemic. Uh, and probably changed. It, it changed a lot where it's like, again, whereas like the company, like again, like is only in the best interest of the company. You know? So it's like, again, they cut workers' wages crazy amount. So like the place where I worked at and like a, when I went back to work for them, my wages were cut drastically. Like again, I was I was trying to work the same amount. Right. I was making a quarter of what I used to now, work. Now is that because they lost customers? And more, uh, again, like, there was like lawsuits and everything oh, and a lot. God. And so like there was all that. And then like, again, they, but the, again, like a big time, a big thing with a lot of corporations is that like they blame everything on the pandemic and a lot. And so they start inflating things or like, Oh well, we can't pay our workers as much again. Like so, there is a little thing with like with corporations that I I would say like again like not like not all corporations are ethical and everything. And oh no, practice. it's about money. And uh, but again, I do agree with like again like there's a lot of entitlement. Entitlement that, is the word I was like. Yeah. Thank so you. there's a lot of entitlement uh, from like this generation for sure. Like I hands down agree with it with that. But um, as far as like with, uh, in corporations, I'm like, again, corporations aren't absolutely innocent either. But again, like if you're, t- if you're talking about like, you know, small business or like, again, and when I say small business, it's like, there's very lucrative, very big small businesses and everything oh, yeah, too. You know? yeah. And so it's like, I would rather work for a small business that's pretty big because again, I can, I can go directly to the boss. Like I can understand where his, his or her mindset is. Right. And then like, again, work my way up from there rather than like, a big ass corporation with shareholders and all that shit. Yeah. So, well, no, I just oh. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, no, I just uh, I think that people just lack common sense. Yeah, that's really what it boils down to. And I think that whether it's generational or not, because it could be, and it's also you're um, you're kind of a victim of your circumstance. And when I don't say victim, I I couldn't think of another word, but it, you're you're influenced by whoever you're around in that company. It was a very progressive company, and they're very open about it. And I think that it's like, um, you know, when you're trying to hone in so much focused on the make you feel good about working in this atmosphere and we're trying to accommodate for everybody's feelings constantly, um, you will generate that sort of outlook with everything in a bubble. Right. And I think, and and I'm not saying that that's completely wrong, but I definitely, it has its negative aspects to it. And what that does is I feel like that that pushes the entitled feeling And I think when you have something up against like, you're like, ah, right. You just had, you just had a complete changeover of ownership. And if you're in a higher position and you're locked in with some of the bullshit that Elon Musk has been very outspoken about being against, right. You have to automatically feel that you are going to be in the hot seat for a second. So you have a couple decisions, right? You either get fired and you be cool with it, or you go, how am I going to, uh, keep this job and keep moving forward because I want to work here, right. right? Regardless of that. But that also kind of shows you like where everyone's at a little bit with that. So that's kind of nuts. But the fact that where you're going to go, I demand, you know, X, Y, and Z, you'd be like, bitch, you should be happy that you still have a job. Yeah. Because technically I've publicly said that I've hated how all of you guys run your job. Yeah. And I'm giving you the opportunity to still work here. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where it's like, that's where I think it is a lot of like the generational stuff. And it's not, and I feel like it's not necessarily that generational 
it's fault. Yeah. I think it's just what has been controlled for you to see that has helped develop you at whatever age that was. Let's say it's high school, college, whether your first jobs are, whatever that is, when you are around people that make you feel that this is what things are supposed to be, you're going to feel like this is what I deserve. Yeah, and that right. morphs the that morphs the thought. So when the rug gets pulled out from under you, mm -hmm. you're like, hey, this isn't fair. Yeah. You know, I deserve this. In fact, I think we should <laughs> all get this. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, that's not how this shit works in the real world. Um, you know, I guess see if Google's hiring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or Facebook or something. You know what <laughs> well, I mean? Yeah. yeah sorry. It's, it, it's funny. I mean, it's like, it's funny because like, uh, what was it? Um, they're, they're everyone, like everyone there is coming after Elon Ma and Musk. Like he's like this absolute like Nazi, like he's the second coming of Hitler and all that. And I'm like, dude, this is the guy that brought to you like the actual like mainstream electric car. Bro, he's this guy is actually, he's actually liberal. It's like, he's like, he stayed in his positions for the same, like same duration over like the years and all that. And then it's like, the left just gone further left, left, left and all that. And now they're like, you're right wing. And he's like, no, I'm not. Like, <laughs> like I'm right. I've been... He's like an OG liberal. Yeah, like yeah exactly. I've me, been liberal fair, since day one. Yeah. He's smart. He's fair and smart. Yeah. And him, if he were to come by a company I worked for, I'd be probably the best thing that happened to him. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean... I'm like, I'll work for you. Elon, I'm reaching out. I want to be whatever director position for yeah. Twitter. I'll do that shit. Now. Actually, RP. speaking of which, we sh <laughs> you guys should get Twitter if you don't have it. I I'm do. I'm going to sign back into I one of mine. I and I will say, Elon, thank you so much for saving Twitter. Making it a fair place again with great information. Oh, Come you're on, our podcast get just bombarded with the most <laughs> silly <laughs> shit ever. They're like, yeah. and you're terrible. How we should, we should do it. We should just yeah. do it. We, we should, should do it. put it up. Hey, Elon, you should come on the podcast anytime. We'd love oh to have God. you on. That'd, talk about that'd it. That'd be amazing. So, cheers, man. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was funny to see all the the reports on the news media from different outlets and how yeah. like they're showing the retweets of like Elon taking over what people were saying. Yeah. Like, it's, could someone stop this terrorist from taking over? I'm like, get out of here. No, he's like, just, he's just all about succeeding. You know what I mean? That's like, it. that's what it is. Yeah. Hey. He's but, smart. Uh, he knows what he needs to do to succeed. And yeah. he'll, if he needs to trim fat and he change things and fire people, dude's not afraid to make it happen. No, he's a business but, guy, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's business. At the base. Yes. You <laughs> have to make it work. Yeah. You have to make money, you know? Well, it could, yeah. Well, here's a big one, right? The big question. The big question is. Ding, ding. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Will Elon Musk de-block Trump? Yes. Right? Well, okay. That's what everyone's... There's a lot of fucking people well, he, that are he very concerned about this. He unblocked... What is it? Uh, Kanye? Yeah. He gave him his profile back. Yeah. Okay, let's take let's take <clears throat> a vote... Or let's take a bet. Okay. What, let's. We got to wager something here. I think that Trump will get his Twitter platform back. Yeah. What do you think? A hundred percent, yeah. Jordan, with the bet, we can't all bet the same, and I would, I would definitely feel like I would for sure be on the same page. We'll just say, yeah. what do you think? We'll take a bet. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, off. no, I guess, <laughs> but I feel like it's gonna happen. Yeah, no, I definitely feel like I, it's gonna happen because I, I feel it's like happen. it's, it's a, but it's not gonna be probably right away. What'll happen is, is that something will get leaked out there that he's thinking about it. It's going to generate a bunch of negative press. You're going to see the stock drop probably like eight bucks, but right. they'll be like, oh, it's down 4% a week. Elon's going to take the company. It's all bullshit. Da, 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 da. Like when he smoked weed on Joe yeah, Rogan? Right. He'll build it up. He'll yeah. build it up. He'll build it up. He'll build it up. And all of a sudden it'll plateau. And then it will be like fucking unblock Trump. And he's like, hey, Mac. <laughs> Even though that truth social shit is crushing it right now. It really is. You yeah. guys have an account yet? I yeah, do I don't. actually. I do. I don't. I do yeah. as well. Are we friends on there? No, I don't. That's, think. I'm, that's I'm crazy. We're co-hosts. We're co yeah, I was like, well, we haven't Damn. talked about it. And I just did it, so I, <laughs> just I don't have any up. followers. Yeah. Um, okay, so you think he'll get his platform back on Twitter? I do. Okay, I do. I think it's feasible. I just think that it'll be this like it'll be drawn out to the point where then he does it, and then everyone's gonna be like pissed. Yeah, but it's gonna be like that kind of pissed where he'll draw out the piss part to where it'll kind of affect the money. And then it's gonna sit for a second, and then he'll unblock it, and then it's just gonna, yeah, right. The CEO, you know, Elon Musk sticks to his word, da 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 da, da and it's just gonna generate press. Yeah, that's all it's gonna do, and people are gonna be like, "Fuck." Wait, you know what? The, a lot of these major CEOs, the Elon Musk, the Donald Trumps, and the Richard Branson, Kanye West, no. Richard Branson's, they don't give a crap about what anybody thinks about them. Mm -hmm. They could care less what the media says. What ha they just go. They go for it. Well, they. I love that. Yeah. I what, love that. The thing is, is like they know what I think. Like a lot of the public 
already or are starting to like kind of see is like the media and shit. Like it's like they're just like Absolutely. corporate lapdogs basically yeah. and all. And they like they're again like it's just like it's a one sided like um, a one sided agenda where they're only showing you one thing and then it's like um, it's, it's crazy to like actually talk to people that still believe that CNN is actually like uh, like not a mainstream news source. I'm like, are you where are Dude, you sitting? They're only getting like like barely five hundred thousand yeah. views. Yeah, I'm like I'm like again, it's <laughs> like no rumbling. one no one trusts. Like I mean, like quite literally, like through the Trump years, like they just kind of de- disintegrated into like not trustworthy journalism. It's just become like so um, partisan and well, um, and you're seeing that CNN has recognized that they fired. All their major news anchors. Oh, yeah. Don Lemon's gone. Oh, he's gone, gone? Yeah, they cut yeah. his show. Oh. He's on. Chris Cuomo's gone. Yeah, it's Although huge. Chris Cuomo just got picked up on uh, News Nation. News Nation, yeah. Which says in the title that they're bipartisan news. No. No. Dude, he's a, it's a joke, and it's a joke that he still has a job. Yeah. Like, Chris Cuomo, I don't know. It's like, like Don Lemon, <laughs> you could make the argument. Like, well, okay, you know what? Maybe he's just doing what he's told remember, to do. Right, like, but, you know, he's an articulate guy. He's good on the money. You know what I mean? Like, he's lied so he's, much he's a horse, he's trying to be show, nice. You know what? He's a horse's ass. Yeah. All of them. All of them lied Chris so Cuomo, much. Like, all, all, everybody at CNN, it's like, there's not one person that I can trust yeah. to give me the news. But like, I'm like, I, I'm just, none. It goes to show none. you that when the fir- pandemic first started, all this stuff that's been happening, and now you look and see the fallout, like, they were wrong. Oh, 100%. There's and they, so much they going won't on. admit that they no. were wrong. Oh, of course not. Well, of course there's a not. lawsuit yeah. in New York that says that they were wrong. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's say that right now. Yeah, so like, we it, didn't put that on the board because I didn't know if we're going to go. So down everybody this knows <laughs> this is very huge because we're first responders. You know, and New York it was a it was a judge in New York said that any New York uh, city worker, government worker, right, who yeah. was fired for not being vaccinated, has to get their job back and back pay. Hit that bell, baby! Boom. What a oh, man. victory! Have you seen the memes? Oh yeah, <laughs> they were dude. like showing up to work with two years of back pay on one check. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> They're all. God. Flashy shit, <laughs> walking in somewhere. It's like oh, firing a bind so Tacomas, true. dude. Get more tattoos, Man. but that goes to show you. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's the most fire red oh, shit yeah. you probably Tatted said. Up, Tacoma, big old freaking tire, <laughs> snorkel on the freaking exhaust. Uh, that was pretty. Funny. Extra gas cans, you know, dude. We're going, I we're doing exact, it, guys. I know, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking but about. That that goes to show you how, <laughs> like, they could not f- force people to get that shot. You're gonna start seeing more fallout from this. It's oh, gonna keep time. going. It, like you, they could not do that, and fire people for not putting something in their body that they don't want to put in. Oh yeah, well, dude, it's funny because like even in the colleges, like um, uh, um, at the college that Cassie goes to, um, they just announced that it's like oh by like uh, starting on uh, the winter semester, like people who are unvaccinated are allowed back on campus, and uh, or people don't have to be vaccinated in order to come back to school and. All that stuff. And it's like, oh, wow. It's just like, and then like, so like, you know, because they're like, so I got vaccinated for nothing, basically. It's like, ridiculous, dude. Because again, it's like, the thing is, is like, oh, like. Dude, this is, we're seeing like one of the greatest science experiments fail. Yeah. That's what we're watching. Yeah. How far can they push it? Right. How can far can they push people to see what they're going to comply with? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. And they did it off of false pretenses, and but, I don't, and I don't think that like the intention purely. How do I phrase this? Uh, not that it was like completely like all bad, right. you know what I mean? Like I feel like it was like okay, look, you know, wherever this shit came from, however it got here, however, move all that shit aside. The reality was people were getting sick. It was something relatively new, hadn't seen, wasn't sure. You know, there was a lot of crazy numbers in the beginning that right. that did dwindle in about three or four weeks, but still, you know, it was enough to scare the fuck out of a lot of people. Yeah. And instead of taking that opportunity of being like, hey, look, look, we're going to try to make this. We're going to do it the best we can. You know, they like funneled all down one road. They didn't talk about therapeutic stuff. They didn't talk about anything else. Like they didn't talk about losing fucking weight, right. getting in shape, getting sunlight, all this stuff. They didn't talk about it. They just went... We got the vaccines. We're going to fucking do it. Yeah. Everyone's getting it. This is how it's going to be. Da, 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 da. And then it was like, it was like, okay, well, is there any other options? And then as soon as that question's pitched, 
everything went hard to the right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, no, this, you know, the vaccine was everything. And again, if you got it, great. If you, if it helped you, great. If you feel like it made you feel better, awesome. I'm stoked for you. You know, fucking A, you guessed correctly, whatever. Yeah. You know, but the way that it was is if you weren't, you were like, kill people, you're outcasted, you're an idiot, you don't know all this stuff. So it's like all the drama that just stemmed, it wasn't just like personally, dude. It went and it influenced people's business. It influenced people yeah. working yeah. You know, was- for, for school, for being able to be there, for the kids. I, yeah. It was such a huge thing that, and it was like for it to come to this point that we're at today, which again, I'm not even making this shit up. Go online, you can find the videos of the reps for these organizations like Pfizer and yeah. Moderna. And they're on, they're on, you know, I don't know, if they're not on trial. I, I don't, I don't, they're like in a court. They're in like a court. A, yeah. they're, they're making an official statement when they're like being asked, hey, did you know that this doesn't stop transmission? They and they're did. like, they're like, actually, yeah. So yeah. turns out that we weren't sure really. Uh, what was going to happen, but we knew that it helped you if you got it, right? right? That's the only information that they had. So then when this, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, okay, so let's backtrack. When this shit did come out, and it was like you had public entities saying, Mm -hmm. do your part, get vaccinated, and that's the only way you're going to be able to not only protect yourself, but protect everybody else. You know what I mean? And right. then, like you had fucking Rachel Maddow was saying on there that if you don't do this, you're killing people. Yeah. You know, the president of the United States said, if you're not vaccinated, you're going to die this winter. You know, I'm not, it's like, it's, cr- I feel like a psycho person in the room saying all this shit out loud because it's like, it's so redundant, but it's like, no, that's how dumb this shit was. Yeah. But people you know? fell for it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, he also again, said, if you don't vote for him, you're not black. Anyways, yeah. keep continuing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone? Saying, coming what? from the half black guy here, Come it's on, like, man. okay. Hey, you know, Jim. it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it was funny because the uh, the whole entire thing with like the effect or like um, everything that happened in the pandemic, right? It's just like at first, like we were just scrambling because we just didn't know what to do, and then our healthcare system wasn't there to facilitate it because our healthcare system is still fucked. But um, when everything was going down, it's just like yeah, like again, like it, what it affected. I'm like it affected like you know children's education too. Like I mean, actually, like our, our like children's education took a oh, yeah. huge step back. Like. Yeah for the last two, three years, like, again, like that's time that those kids are not going to get back as far as like with their education and their social development. Exactly. Yeah. And actually like the kids that were born in like in the pandemic, the COVID babies, babies, like again, like their social development is actually way behind because like they, like, again, you think about it, it's like you go out in public and all and you see like, again, you're a baby and you're only seeing people like with wearing masks. You're not seeing people's faces. You're not actually interacting. You're not actually going to like other kids' houses because- You're not learning how to read people. Exactly. I mean, that's huge to learn social cues. So it's, it's like- Look at the, you know, how people use their face to, to speak. Yeah. Like frowning, happy, sad, or awkward. Those are all important things to learn. Yeah. And so like, there's a lot of developmental stuff like with our youth that has taken a big step back because of this and also as far as like with like it's all like going one side right it all went down one avenue it's because like again there was and i mean it goes into like fucking fauci like he like a dude that motherfucker like again like he has a lot to blame because not only is it like again like yeah he's the guy at the top so the buck ends with him but the thing is he was the one that opened up uh, like reopened up the like uh the testing for covid uh, like uh like for the covid testing or um, just like the research, the COVID research in Wuhan, right? And so it's like... A, it was like the gang, gang of function gang, research. Exactly. Yeah. You say, yeah. Did you say Wuhan or Kung Fu Flu? No, no. Wait, what? Oh, Tim, let me start <laughs> right there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Family-friendly show. Hey, I'm just, I'm not saying I said it, but I've heard those type of things. Ah, said about ah. The funniest dub diseases ever, the dude. Kung Fu flu. But, <laughs> but dude, like, and, you know, China. it's like, it's not, it's not the fact that like, it's not only the fact that he like, um, he gave the green light when initially, like back in the Obama years, that they shut it down because they were like, no, this is too risky. And then, like, it, through, like, like, through the Trump, like, he was able to kind of, like, green light it again. And then, and then on top of that, it's just like when things actually ended up happening and all that, he was covering it up and all that. And the th- fact is, is that, like, there's evidence that is there that he's been covering it up. And then, like, you know what? Nothing's, nothing's going to be done. Like, he's no. going to, like, 
he's going to ride off into his retirement and everything and nothing's going to happen to him. And like, that's the thing that really pisses me off is like, there's no justice for someone like that. Now, you know what will happen is he's going to write like seven books <sighs> and every book he puts out is going to make probably three or $4 million a book. That's yeah. what will happen for him. You know what I mean? And of it's course. like, if you want to just, a, of course, don't even take this whole way the pandemic was just go back. If you're, if you have any interest and some time, Look up his influence on oh, the, AIDS the AIDS epidemic, AIDS and epidemic and yeah. about how the drug for the HCZ was pushed. Yeah. And how, like, if you ever watched Dallas Buyers Club, yeah. that drug that's like fucking killing everybody that Matthew McConaughey, like, searches down in Mexico to find an alternative treatment. Yeah. Is the, that's the drug they were talking about, like, during the 80s. And then that was Fauci's, like, situation. Yeah. He was the one that was pushing that. And all of a sudden, Dude. they had millions of, it was a fucking death sentence to get AIDS. Yeah. I've said the F word a lot tonight, so I apologize, by no, the way. It's cool, man. But I was Fuck like, I'm just going. Dude. I know. <laughs> you know, um, what but the yeah. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. Man. Yeah, well, you know, you know, like I said, family friendly show, right? <laughs> just kidding. Um, but anyway, yeah. So it's it's super interesting. So to see that this stemmed from it's like it it Dude. makes sense. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. If you knew this guy's backstory, if everyone knew, you'd be like, maybe not that you would not do anything, but maybe you would take a second to like think about it. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny because like the same people or like the people that um, are in that political party and everything back in the day would be like, fuck Fauci and everything. But now they're glorifying Fauci. Oh, yeah. For, the same th for pretty much the same thing. It's just like, I'm like, I'm like, this is so ridiculous and backwards. I'm like, I, I really don't know what's going on in society. I, I really don't understand. I, I just don't. Again, it's cheap. Everyone just believes yeah. what they hear and see. It's like, do your own research. But don't you feel like, like if COVID happened in like, let's say in the 70s. I feel like it would have been like a Republican thing to be like, just get your shot and do what you need to do for your country. Suck it up. Yeah. yeah. And like, the, like, a, like a liberal person would be like, hey, man, like you should be able to make that decision on your yeah. own. I've, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've just gone like. <laughs> but you, you also. I mean? but, like, but you, yeah. I think. I think. <laughs> I don't know how to put this right, but I think society would also kick COVID's ass because that's the time when people were putting birthday cakes down next to ashtrays and kids were blowing <laughs> that's it true. out. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They're smoking in the hey, car with honey. the kid yeah, in the background. True. And guess what? Hey, kiss. Yeah. Everyone survived, dude. Yep. Kids didn't have helmets when they're riding skateboards. You know, yeah. we were a lot tougher time, like yeah. tougher people during that time. But that anyways, is, that is very that's a very good point. It would have been approached way differently. Yes, yeah, so everyone would have laughed. Yeah, they'd be like, like, oh, whatever. you mean that really shitty flu? Yeah. They're like, not, <laughs> and they're two different things. I'm not saying it's the same thing i just mean like that's the that's the menta mentality that would have been taking yeah. place hey, not, okay our next one let's jump to it paul pelosi <sighs> the hammer you put paul pelosi shenanigans <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, he's put shenanigans I mean, I <laughs> it's close there might be an i after the g like shenanigans shenanigans <laughs> I should at the college they're like hey we need you they, they you know it's my first year like teaching a class there and they're like you need to uh, put together a syllabus. And I, I remember thinking, I can't even spell syllabus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a, a check. What? There's a spell Y, check. right? Yeah, I was Somewhere like, the L. Uh, is there like four L's in there? Are we good? Okay. Anyways. Totally. Okay. So Paul Pelosi shenanigan shenanigans. So I guess I ha I I just saw this today. It happened today, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Paul Pelosi, this, uh, somebody broke into the Pelosi's house with in San hammer. Francisco and beat the crap out of him with a hammer. So I guess what I what I saw or like what like the information I got was that like uh, when police uh, came to the property, it's like it was almost like a standoff between Pelosi and the intruder, and they both were holding hammers. Yeah, and all, and that and that so story. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, cool. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because yeah. the story has morphed. That's I didn't know that. That's oh, why yeah. when I text you, I was like. Dude, this shit with Paul Pelosi is <laughs> fucking crazy. Because <laughs> like at first it was like the the initial report came out. It was like it was like Paul Pelosi's in the hospital. He there was an intruder that broke it in and hit him with a hammer. But the cops got there and they got him out and he's like he's messed up, but he's gonna make it. Yeah, right. And right. that was it. That was probably and this. Yeah, because this started today and it was probably till like. I don't know, maybe like noon, one, somewhere in there. Because I remember seeing it this morning. And of course, like my conspiratorial side yeah. of me goes, ooh, someone sent a message to Paul. Because the first thing I thought was, is like, how does someone break into the third in line to be the president of the United States house with a hammer? 
Right. You know what I mean? I thought the <clears throat> same thing. Like, yeah. I'm not thinking, talking about, how does this even happen? Yeah, I'm not talking about a $3 million, you know, something bougie where you still have like public access. I'm talking a fucking compound <laughs> here. Yeah, you yeah. just got a, ro- a rogue guy made it. And he broke in the well, house and he beat him up because he doesn't like him. It's also San Francisco where anything goes. So yeah. they also have the loosest laws and... True. I mean, criminals have more rights than people. True, but the Pelosi family yeah, they're they're should it. have they're Secret Service, yeah. something around. Right, but e- either way, it's like, okay, so why? Was there motive, or was it just a random psycho, which is that does exist, just In a San crazy Francisco. person? Yeah, maybe just drugged out, and they're like, I'm doing it. But the other side of me is kind of like, Paul Pelosi's fucked up a couple times this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's been, he gets away with everything. There's been two situations with uh, insider trading that lines incredibly up with them making a shit ton of money. Yeah. And he also got fucking deuced. And I, everyone can watch that video where he was hammered. Oh, yeah. Mm, and he's yeah. like, hey, guys. <laughs> and he got out. He got off. He made yeah. It. He made it off that thing. So how does that happen if your wife isn't, you know, the state is plus his senator, right? No, she's also the house, crypt, but the house of representatives. House, sorry, yeah. the, I call her the crypt keeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she looks like a skeleton with just skin <laughs> slapped over it. Well, she's been a fucking politician for fifty years, you know. Give hey, it up already. Let's go term limits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, some fresh blood. <laughs> so, it's so, not going to be a winner every time, but at least you know they're not right. going to be there forever. Yeah. But, okay, <laughs> exactly. so with this story though, th- they're trying to figure out why he had a hammer now. Oh. Okay. Is that what's going on? Okay, okay. I'm oh, so boy. sorry. I sidetracked. Yeah. No, you're good. You're because good. going back to what you said. Yeah. Because as the day went on, the story was that the cops were called at 2 a.m. for a welfare check. So just to give everyone a heads up, um, that's not a domestic dispute. So like if if you were a neighbor and you were like, hey, I hear somebody yelling at each other or um, you ha- you know, you're know, you making a lot of ruckus because right. you're fighting or you're, there's threats with weapons, all that stuff, that's a domestic dispute. Right. So a welfare check would be like... Uh, I haven't seen this person in a couple of days. Yeah. They're like, it's like, I'm getting concerned. Uh, can someone go check on them? Yeah. yeah. Because if it was loud music or something, it'd be civil disturbance. Right. Right. So there's different, there's different keys. And so when the, when you read about it, it's, that's very specific, a welfare check. That'd be like, yeah, like you hit no, say, Hey, I haven't heard from Evan in two weeks. I know that he's injured. Uh, could you go by and check out to make sure he's okay? Yeah. Right. So this happened at 2 a.m. Like who's calling, I'm Paul Pelosi at 2 a.m. for a welfare so check. So is this a... Oh, boy. So, so is he guy, hooking up with this dude? Yeah, dude. Oh, so no. so the cops get there. <laughs> and a, now it's now the story is... And this is what the... the uh, there was a police chief saying this, right? So this is like on camera and all this stuff. That the cops got there and saw Paul Pelosi with a hammer in his hand across from the other person who was in their underwear. And then at some point, the other person gets the hammer because originally there was two hammers. Now it's one hammer, and it was originally in Paul Pelosi's. The other guy grabs it out of his hand and then strikes him with it. And then they subdue him, and then everything else. So the idea now is that, and look, again, it could be a crazy person. I just think it's fun to talk about. But uh, could be his, like, lover. Oh! And something happened. He got caught. Dang. And then he started talking a ton of shit. And this dude's like, fuck you. Yeah, I'll let we're, you think. We're yeah. boning each other. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dude. Dude. So, I mean, the hammer's pretty crazy. So, but, so Nancy, yeah. Pelosi's, Nancy Pelosi's husband is playing with a little pee-pee on the side. I mean, that's a potential storyline. Which, okay, fine. Like, you do what you want. It's yeah, not, I don't care. Not, it's not my problem. But... You're causing a lot of drama, homeboy. Yeah. You're causing a lot. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Oh, my God. This is going to be a good story, dude. This you got is- the Hunter Biden laptop shit. Now, Pelosi's are just robbing They're just like the government forward. blind and getting away with yeah. it, making insider trading. And now her husband's caught playing with some dude in his underwear, and something that's, happened, that's and that's he's four. getting hit with a hammer. Dude, that's like that's four stories in the last year, right? Yes. Four stories in the last year with the Woo! Pelosi's. Yeah. I was like, how how much longer is this gonna go on until like something actually happens? I don't I don't know. But do you like, guys remember like when in the when when Trump was making his like last day of the union, yeah, the speech and Nancy Pelosi went like this. You remember oh, that everyone yeah. clapped and she did this. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, like she was so excited. She's it like, it was he's so gone. weird. He's yeah, he's gone. We're gonna she, run the show. She rubbed her hand like knuckles together like this at the time when everyone's supposed to clap. 
Yeah, she's but that, in the background. You see her. I'm just like, dude, what she is does, wrong with her? But she always did some shit. There was another. It was a State of Union address or whatever, or not State of Union. It was another congressional thing where there he was talking about how the, he was able to change the law that opened up the opportunity that if you want to send your kid to a, like a better school just because you don't live in that district, you yeah. can do it. And the person that they had on there was some. It was an African American lady with her. She had a couple kids and she wanted her kids to go to a better school than the area that she lived. And they. They used her as the example of like what this is going to do for them, you know, like for a parent that lives in an area that you want your kid to go to another school. So it was like a really cool thing. Like, yeah, do, again, these are like those things where it's like it doesn't matter what what aisle you sit on. This is just great. A great opportunity. It was like one, you just showcase a parent who gives a shit about their kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to get them to have a better opportunity. It's like, I don't care if you like Trump. I don't care if you hate Trump. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, if, you know, it's like either way, it's good. Again, like if Biden would do something, it's like, well, I may not be a fan of him, but I can agree with the policy. Right. While that was going on, Nancy Pelosi was taking the fucking bills that he was writing up and she was ripping them up. <laughs> yeah. Like she was proving a point, right? Like this is her yeah. chance to be on the, the pedestal, if you will. Watch, as this is going, I'm just going to get shot. This is going to go. <laughs> Magic bullet, dude. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, Magic it was bullet. like it was only one gunman. <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald's. Uh, that story is going to unfold, and we're going to have to talk about it some more. But the last thing we're going to yeah. talk about, real quick, um, Jeffrey Dahmer, D Choppers. Is that what his name? It says D Chopper Dahmer. D Chopper. D Chopper Dahmer. So, so Jeffrey Dahmer. Have you guys watched that series on no, Netflix? I have not. I have watched it. It, it is very intense, uh, very graphic. Mm hmm. Um, but it's interesting because it gives you an insight into how he grew up. And it's really weird. And I'm going to preface this with saying, like, nothing he did was, should have happened. It was wrong. And, you know, he probably should have been put to death, but he wasn't. He got life. And unfortunately, he was murdered in, in jail. But I couldn't help but feel kind of bad for that guy for the way he was raised. It was fucked up. Mm, Completely yeah. messed up. Now, that doesn't excuse his behavior. But through the movie, you can see he's trying to say something to his dad. Dad, something's wrong with me. There's something, like, I need help. And his dad's always brush it off. It's like, no, nah, you're fine. You're, like, you're good to go. Right. Huh. Yeah, and his first victim he killed was, he was like 17 or 18 years old. Was that how young it was? When yeah, it when he first did it. Crazy. Oh. Yeah, for a long time. And it's a very... Um, this dude, I don't want to ruin it too much, but yeah, he, I mean, to, he had, he was chopping people up in his apartment, putting them in acid, bleaching the bones. Um, he was mainly hitting on the lower income community, African, African Americans, gays. No. Um, but it gave you a really big insight into um, mental health, one, but also what was really interesting to me is at the end, it, um, and I read this too, it said that Dahmer became a Christian in jail, got baptized, and understand like the error of his ways. I mean, I think and it's probably... interesting, but like, do you believe it? Do you not? I don't know. You don't know the person's heart. Will we see this dude in the afterlife? I don't know. Is he going to be in heaven or hell? I don't know if you believe it or not. Cool. Whatever to you, but I do I mean... know it, it's a tough thing. <laughs> Hold on, Tim. I just want to say one thing real yeah. quick. If you, if when you die, you go to heaven. Yeah. Right. And you're like, oh my God, this is awesome. And right. the next thing you know, you're standing across from Hitler. Do you think you'll like have a little bit of like, man, I could have pushed the limits like way more. Uh, <laughs> I see. You know what I, I mean? Like, like, I thought like, about that. Because like, like, <laughs> I get it, right? It doesn't matter what you do. You, you accept and, you know, forgive and move on and accept all this stuff. And I'm not downgrading. I'm going to say all this stuff. I'm just trying to talk fast. Um, but like, do you, I, there's got to be a couple of. You know, this works for like ninety nine point nine nine percent. But the ones who like chop bodies up and eat them, like uh, so, yeah. I thought you about might that. Go but, to but hell. I have my own faith, and I read. It, and the thing is, we'll never truly understand the the deepness and the depth of God's grace, and how He truly doesn't care what you do. This is very against what we feel as humans, right? We feel we need to get vengeance, and this person did bad, and he did this. But in reality, what I've always learned is, no matter what you do, no matter how bad it is, all sins the same. And Christ wants you to be saved. You just got to ask for forgiveness. His grace is abundant. Doesn't matter if you're a murderer, adulterer, a thief, all sin is the same. Now, for us in our eyes, what he did is dark. But you got to think, we're looking at the human level, right? The Lord is like, he's looking at that. That's the thing I struggle with when I watch this. I remember thinking, I thought what you thought. And I was like, oh my God, like, okay, so what I know my faith is Christ, God, still loves this dude. 
And that's hard for us to comprehend as humans. Whereas Christ is like, I just want this person to change and be better, right? And he needs forgiveness. He needs me, but he needs to accept it. Yeah. But for us on a human level, that's really, really hard to understand and accept. Because yeah. what he did is dark. Let's be real. Two, I could never cut a human being up. I could never drink their blood. I could never eat them like he did. Okay? Yeah. Eat them. But Tim, here's say the, it slower. Yeah, I know, eat them, <laughs> right? Ate them. Ate them. I, yeah. But, you know, I heard a really good sermon. Like, hey, I think this is the me. <laughs> yeah, <I got> it. <laughs> you know what but, I mean? I mean, like, like again, like, but from the sources that you hear, they said it. he he was genuine. He he got, you know, and it was crazy because before he died, it's, it's documented. The guy asked him, why did you do what you did? He said, I, I was lost, but I'm a Christian now. I got baptized. I'm saved. And he said, well, the Lord says vengeance is mine and just beats him to death. Whoa. Is what it is, right? I, I mean, do you think he was punting a little bit? I don't know. You, well, he that's was the like, thing. I, I don't know. I, I, you, I'm, yeah. <laughs> here's me. Here's me on this. I'm 50 50 on it. You, Sorry, you don't truly like know, but I heard this sermon, um, and this guy spoke at my brother's funeral, a pastor. Oh, okay. It was really good. But he said, We'll never know and understand God's grace because we can't as humans, because we're, we're, we're in a sinful world. We can only think so far. Oh. You're talking about a creator, and he's like, There will be people in heaven. That you will be shocked or there because you truly don't know their heart. Christ looks at the heart. And that's a hard thing to accept, bro, because what he did was terrible. Right. You hear the uh, families talk up there and they yell, I hate you, I hope you die, and all this stuff. And I look, you know, you try to look at it from a spiritual perspective. God yeah. still loves this guy. And that's hard to accept, bro. I've had to forgive people in my life that have wronged me. And mother, bro, sometimes you just want to fucking throw the biggest right hook. Uh, but then you're just like, it's easier to forgive this person and move on. But you're like, if God can forget Dahmer, I can get past this. Yeah. <laughs> but that, 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 honestly, sorry, that, was, that was a bad joke. No, no, but, yeah. but that was the one thing but, that yeah. kind of stuck out to me at the end. I like, I was That's thinking true. about That's it a on point. a different perspective. I'm like, ooh, this is a this is a really tough one, because if that was my family member, I don't know how I could forgive him for chopping them up and yeah. sexually abusing. You know, like I what he did. Yeah. I wouldn't. Period. It'd be tough. I would, I'm not God, oh, dude. It'd be terrible. Would, <laughs> you know. No, that's actually, why. it's funny because like again, bring up the family members. Like again, like the um, the family members are pissed because they didn't know that this was going on. And it's like again, they're reopened. Like I mean, Netflix literally like reopened. Oh old my god. And everything. Oh, and so it's dude. like again, like I, and this is the thing. It like again, like I. Now it's like I don't really like again like I didn't watch this I didn't watch the uh, Dude, other the John Wayne Gacy one I finished that yesterday. No, or, 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 what, 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 the, what was the other one? What was the one that um, Ted, Zach, Bundy. Ted Bundy? Uh, so it's like yeah like again watching those like the reenactments of that of those like I'm not a fan of those because again like it's kind of glorifying them and it's like it's like you're putting like it's like oh yeah these like crazy like serial killers and all it's like again like in giving them. A series and all for their name to live on. It's like, oh yeah, let's see how crazy. Like again, like glorifying and almost like again, like getting like attractive actors to play them and everything. And it's like, uh, and it's making like, it appealing. Yeah, it's something. like you know, it's because like again, like, granted, like we're talking about it right now, but it's yeah. just kind of a thing where I'm like, like I'm not a fan of that. Like I'm like I'm like, dude, this is bullshit. Like I mean, and then I think about it's like, okay, well yeah, the families who were affected by this and all, that, and it's like they have to see this and that is a big phenomenon. It's like, oh, it's going, it's making its rounds on like social media and everything. Well, it's sad. Point yeah. I really never looked at. It from what do you guys right? think? The families are now having to remember like their sons are getting drugged, sexually abused, and chopped up. Right, like the actor right. that plays the one of the <laughs> kids that are killed, like that family's out there going, like, "Oh yeah, that was Uncle So and So." Dude, you know yeah. what? Honestly, you if know? you can't stomach it, watch the John Wayne Gacy one on Netflix. Uh, it is so messed up what he did to these young boys, like fifteen to seventeen, twenty year olds. Is he another fridge guy, right? Dude, he, like no, chop them up and put them in the freezers. And um, stuff? dude, he would dress up in his clown. He would. Oh. He would trick them into putting handcuffs on. He was a contractor, and these young guys would come look to him for work. Bring it back to their house and put it like, oh, look at this cool trick with these handcuffs. And then flip it around and put it on them. They couldn't get out. And then he would choke them out. And then they would pass out or die. And then he would torture them. And he would dress up in his clown suit and put his clown face on and just hmm. put their head in water, almost drown them, not drown. It's, but it's crazy because at the end of the, of the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer series, they go into that. They show the ending scene is John Wayne Gacy. It's another because they, they're showing there's another guy during that time who was. That was all the same time. Yeah, dude, he had 29 bodies under his house. What? Yeah, it was insane. Was that the same time too as the Zodiac Killer? 
Mm. It was in like my late be. 70s, right? That was yeah, like 70s yeah. was wild. That bro. is crazy. It was a wild time. And you had Ted Bundy. Yeah, Ted oh, Bundy was like right. 70s, 80s. It was right? terrible. Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing, people. Why people shit? You yeah. ever see a brother serial killer? Um, actually, there was Thank one you. in. You there, no, there was one. There was one in. Um, a, there was one in. Uh, like recently, actually. Oh, the one who was shooting out of the back of his trunk. Yeah. 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 Shooting yeah. people with a scope. The what? Oh, what something. Uh, the guy from um, Stockton. Yeah. Oh, Stockton serial oh. killer. Yeah. Like oh yeah. yeah. And there was uh, the the one in D.C. Or no, but I was in. It was in Maryland. There was like a father son combo thing yeah. where they were going around, but that but see that's like more of a they were like shooting in open. Oh, Lee crowds. Malvo, right? Is there something like that? Malvo? Yeah, or like yeah, it wasn't like, as much of a serious, but I know what the one you're you're talking about. Yeah, were, so actually, funny enough, I have a buddy who uh, who's actually part of Stockton Police Department. So it's like I was like, oh shit! So like he was kind of like it's not Tony safe. Yeah. Not <laughs> crazy. Yeah, like, anyways, I just wanted to, I just want to bring up the Jeffrey Dahmer thing because I watched it. And it's really interesting to see the psychological part of like behind the scenes of this serial killer how they were raised and what they turned into and how you know (coughs) not excusing what he did yeah but really like when you have children the responsibility of raising them right and being there for them and not being selfish like you're having a huge impact on a man right but that it goes to show that there are some people that shouldn't have kids not because like not out of like oh like because they can but it's like no but like again there's a certain like maturity and certain like, uh, like again like you have to take responsibility and like i don't i mean again like you could say that about a lot of people that's like there's a lot of people that don't take a responsibility that are selfish and they're thinking of only themselves and their problems that so they're not um they're not taking the time to actually like you know be there for their kids yeah. so and there's also just people who are mentally just sick people yeah, yeah. and it, here's the interesting part is Dahmer went to church as a kid john wayne gacy he was involved in the choir a deacon he was like way involved in church Really? So even in your church, be careful. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, but anyway, yeah, I just want to bring up, because I, I remember thinking about him being saved at the end, how they showed him being baptized and how true it looked. Yeah. And how, like, even the pastors in the jail were happy for him and his father. But I'm just like, oh, because we can't understand the weight of grace. Yeah. The true, what grace really means on the on the highest and umpteenth level. Yeah. That no matter what a person does, they should be able to be forgiven as long as they're sincere. But as a, on a human level, it's a, that's a struggle for me, dude. I'm like, nah, man. It's hard, like, bro. Uh, I, mean, I, got, I mean, from my perspective, I'm like, nah, that guy's <laughs> gonna burn fucking hell, <laughs> yeah. and he should, and he should. Uh, and I was like, you know, like I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm like, it is, yeah. I mean, like again, like it's like I, also says it's just like you know, it's like oh, like you know, only it's like isn't it like in scripture that it's like only God is like the one to take away, like God to gives bring and, and take away, away and all that. And it's like yeah. that's His choice, and like if you're making that choice, like you're playing God, and that's not that's a sin in itself. Yeah, Just but I've always stand known next to him in if heaven. you ask for forgiveness, no matter what you do, he will give it to you. Yeah. That's the hard part, though. You're that's just like, pretty crazy. That's it a is. very yeah. profound statement. Yeah. Right. It? It's I mean, hard, but it's, it, that's it's why great, I say, like, on a human level, your natural reaction is to say, fuck that guy. He needs to burn in hell. He should die, and this and that. But God is like, I still love him. Do you it think, was just like, well, you're like, wait, what? Do you think How? You, do you think when you get to heaven, like, you still will feel that way? Like, so, like, you just say, like, it's like, uh, I don't know, I picture, like, what if it's, like, this huge, like, hall, right, and everyone's drinking and partying and having fun, catching up and all that shit. I feel like even in whatever the form that would be, if, like, Jeffrey Dahmer's soul was, like, kind of standing close to me, I'd probably be like... You might have got it like, in here, buddy, uh, but uh, I still don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going anyway. to sleep on the Golden Streets while I'm in my match. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, I just want to bring it up because well, like, to me, there's a, such a conflict there. Uh, I would just, no, I would that's just a good think, point, dude. You know? I would just think of like, you know, it's like, okay, well, like, like hypothetical, like that's like, that's what happens. Like he goes to heaven and all that. And it's like, and like, you know, those people that I killed are in heaven and all that. It's like, that would be a very interesting Right, they'd be like, I really I, want to hurt you, but I can't because we're here. <laughs> I think of that time when we're, you know, you moved on to the next life. I think there will be an, a complete understanding of life and suffering and why things have happened the way they did. Right, there the, won't be any question. You'll just have an under, like, okay, it happened that way. It prepared me for this place in this time. Right, because like when you when you cross over, mm-hmm. like regardless of how you did, right, right, whether it was something terrible or age or whatever, but it's like it was that first feeling of transitioning into. Let heaven or whatever whatever that will be, 
Is it like just the utmost like, oh my God, I, we were there for that long? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> this place is great. Like that immediate feeling, you know what I mean? Like, is that what that is? And if yeah. that's the case, you probably would be able to be like, well, yeah, that was terrible, but look where we're at now. This is amazing. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, so that's... It's like kind of a cool thing to look forward it's to, a, it, you know it's what I mean? It's a really cool concept, yeah. I, you know, because I have, you know, I always say I have like investments in that. Right? I have, unfortunately, have friends who've killed themselves. I have a brother who's killed in a you know car accident, and you're like, man, you always just wonder what are they doing? What's happening? You know. So I've read a lot of books on heaven that are scripture based from like theologians, and pastors, and different things. And yeah. I would say like, you know, our time on Earth is just a moment, even though it may seem long, and we're suffering, we go through all this. But when eternity comes, you'll realize that. Your life was for a purpose, and the Lord made you for a purpose, and what you went through was for a purpose. But it's we won't truly know until our time's up. And then it'll, it's like, it will make sense. You won't have questions. It'll be like, oh, sweet. I, I just hope there's weed up there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ring the bell but anyways, for that, Actually, dude. real quick. Uh, actually, no, we're going. We got to get going. I'm sorry. We're out of time. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. we're not no. going to ask the internet? <laughs> oh, one oh, question, here, one, one question, question, one question, yeah. one question. I, always uh, <laughs> I was going to see what Sam number two thought about grace and forgiveness on, on um, the Jeffrey Dahmer level. Would, yes, would, God always forgives everyone. So, I mean, he's forgiven. Wow, that was deep, yeah. guys. Oh, Hit the bell. Yeah. Hit Sam the bell. two coming in. Yeah, I have taken baths deeper than that fucking statement. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. Give us I, the questions. <sighs> this one the is, is not appropriate. <laughs> it's funny, though. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it says, would you rather have one giant dick for an arm or have all your fingers be penises? <laughs> That's a tough Ooh. one. Ooh. It's like a not appropriate question. Honestly, but a I would different do, one to think about. Uh, I'm gonna sound like such a POS right now. <laughs> the big dick for an arm, because you, can you imagine the load that would come out of that thing? And if You'd it probably feels be dehydrated. Probably be great. Oh, be euphoria. Oh man, you just put you down. Yeah. You're just like. You're like, I have to be on my back. Why? Because I'm going to pass oh, out. Yeah. It's dangerous. Or you have to wear all a helmet the, all or something. All the blood's in my arm, man. I can't, yeah. I can't I think, think. You know what? I think I'd, have, I think I'd go with uh, the penis fingers. Penis fingers? Yeah. Oh, my man. I, I, like, again, like, it's like, like, not because it's like, it's like, ah, like, I don't know. I feel like it'd just be easier to get off. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if you more went, entertaining, like, like, that's for sure. Yeah. But, can you imagine <laughs> if... Um, if you went like rock climbing with your <laughs> fingers, dude, that 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 skin down there is gentle, you know. That's yeah, why you put does, gloves on. It'd be pretty it's <laughs> penis gloves. There you bunch go. of condoms on your fingers yeah. while you're rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to use magnums. This conversation. <laughs> I need the gold leaf, gentlemen. Like, nice. I have really big <laughs> wiener climbing yeah. gloves. You got really big fingers. They're triple XLs. Hey, Sam, number two. What would you do? Probably the. The big penis can you arm. not be nervous right now? I, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking. Said, oh, like, can you I relax? need a drink. Sam number two is on the spot. God, okay? me, I, ask a question. It's so direct, like, relax, have a conversation. I need a drink, is what I need. <laughs> it's a really weird question, and especially since I female. don't have one. So, right, I, but you know what's funny is your answer was you'd go for the big one in the arm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so right on, Sam big, two. Yeah, right on. big dick energy. <laughs> I would go. I'd probably go wiener fingers. Wiener fingers right yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. dude, just because. <laughs> yeah, right? Because of those scenarios. They'd be like, yeah. is it gay? Is it not? I don't know. <laughs> right. It's a hand, but it's not. Right. No. Uh, <laughs> You're five times more likely to get an STD. I mean, yeah. Unless I meet the right one. Five different. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Or the right five. Of you. I don't know. My wife would be like, she, I don't know. She, this is, she would not approve of this conversation. She'd be like, you guys are idiots. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, one more question. One more question. Where your fingers coming home later, baby? <laughs> <laughs> one more. One more. Okay. Babe. One more question. One more. One more. All right. We'll tone it down a little bit. Uh, let's. What are three items that you can fit in a fanny pack you would choose to bring with you on a desert island? Three things you put in a fanny pack. To go to a desert island? Like wiener finger condoms. <laughs> <laughs> or gloves, sorry. Waterproof yeah. matches. Okay. Oh. A big kniff. Knife or machete. Okay, I was like, yeah. explain. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
In a blanket. Mm. Three things. Don't be moaning over there. You can make a blanket out there. <sighs> okay. I would. What did you do? Oh yeah, I was like, I would do uh, <coughs> one of the flint sticks. Ah, flint lock, dude. Flint yeah. lock, yeah. Do that. I would do a massive parachute because all the P cord that's in there. Mm. Use that to fasten. Make a blanket and Very good. a hammock because this island's gonna be dope. And then um, third thing, mm. camera can go on 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 Jordan. Oh. <laughs> It's like I see this red light on me. I'm like, so Jordan is talking. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, my third item would be um, probably like just a really big like uh, cast iron skillet pot. Oh my god! That would fit in a fanny pack. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, my parachute wouldn't fit in there either. It'd be really you small. Got some ba- Damn big, it, dude. Actually, my blanket would. Shit, he's not gonna fit in there either, dude. Dang Fucking it. fanny pack. Flint lock. Um, I would do wet wipes. Oh. And oh, magnifying no. glass because I could start a fire with that thing. Okay, that's Let's actually go. good. Oh, that's smart. That's yeah. smart. So I'll do. I still stick with the flint lock, but if I was gonna go smaller based items, it would be a knife. Yeah. And uh, ooh, I don't know. I have, damn it, I have no idea because I was thinking of something medical, right? But I was like a bottle of isopropyl alcohol just in <laughs> case I get a cut. <laughs> you know, uh, that's lame. But I'll live longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll suffer for longer. Hell yeah, dude. Let's see. Oh, man. What, what about you, I do? dude? Man. Um, yeah, I would do like Fucking one of those. Pre workout. <laughs> just oh! He's like C4 <laughs> strawberry <laughs> flavor. Oh, first, first thing is like creatine. Uh, <laughs> Three things simple protein, creatine, yeah. glutamine. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Like, God, you guys took forever to answer that. Yeah, no, I, I, you know what? I do like, a, again, like a big utility knife, um, like, uh, like a pocket knife that has like everything in it. Um, what else? Again, something to start a fire, whether that be again, I, I do like the idea of like waterproof uh matches. Yeah, dude. Like I, would, I have two two cases full. Yeah. Uh, so for camping. They're in this like little round like, waterproof freaking thing too as well. But I like I awesome. have like a big pack of that and then what's the last thing? The last thing. Hmm. What? <laughs> I must have tiny Playboy. That's so. I was like a subscription oh, to Brazzers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's Team Skeet. Team yeah. Skeet. Oh, team, team, team. Sorry, sorry. No, yeah. oh, what's that? Yeah. Subscription like, to oh. Casting Couch. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny too. Uh, what's, man, her what's her the last name? One? Yeah. Hashtag what's her name? Oh, Who man. is she? Who is she? I would uh, like. <laughs> what, what would be the last thing? The you know what? I would, I would just uh, again, just like uh, sub. I would just say like uh like I guess yeah I just I'd go boring and go with a blanket, dude. Something like, you can get those um like God, all- having the suspense on the build up on that yeah. one. I thought you were gonna go with a Fuck different thing. It's true. <laughs> I may die, but I'm gonna get mine before I die. <laughs> Anyways, oh. guys, thanks so much for coming uh, for our monthly review. This is always a good time. I love that we had festive shirts and just having fun. Sam Komalafe, we miss you. Kem Wafe. Sam Komalafe, we Come miss you. Way. Thank you to Sam number two for operating the cameras and yeah, being yeah. so direct with your answers. You Thank got you, it. Sam. Yeah. To <laughs> the point, Sam. Yeah, yeah, to the point. Sam, Sam the second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't waste miss no you, time. Miss you, Sam one. Miss yeah. you. <laughs> See you the next one. Samothy, I miss you, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, I hope you guys man, have you. a great Halloween. Enjoy it with your kids. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Um, uh, but what are you going to be, Jordan? Uh, I'm going to be me. Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm going to be, I want to be me. <laughs> no. Is that a song? No, be it's got to be me. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> no, uh, I honestly don't have a costume. I don't know. I'll probably do something silly. Right you on. Know, that'll oh. be my thing. I don't know. I'll figure it out on the fly. But my kid's gonna be a firefighter. So oh, yeah. I'm super pumped. That's nice. Yeah, it's like the it's That's like rad. the year to do it. Fuck yeah. yeah. So it's happening. But other than that, yeah. What about you guys? Um, I don't know. I'm actually gonna be off. Surprisingly. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'll be doing a live burn that day during the day and then the evening. Probably honestly go back to my sister's house like I did last year and pass candy out. So, right on. It's fun. Yeah. Get twisted. Love it. Nice. Love it. I'm gonna be Mr. Incredible. I know. Because it. we're gonna be the Incredibles. Aw. And the, then no, like, I like I know that we have to go, but like again, like the whole entire thing was like so. Damien already had it, or um, I got to cut that out. Um, but uh, oh, like my son, yeah, my son, like my son's, um, like he already had his costume. He was gonna be um, 
uh, or hammerhead, a hammerhead oh. shark. Oh, nice. Yeah, because like he's all obsessed with like ocean life and everything, which is so sick. And all, and the fact that he loves like sharks, I'm like, I'm like fuck you. And, like, yeah, right? and the coolest shark. The coolest shark. Dude, the hammerhead is like so sick. But he had a cool costume and everything. And then like me, like me and my girl were just like at a Halloween spirit store, like uh, while he was in school. And we're like, what are we gonna be for Halloween? And so we're looking around, and like there's a couple of awesome like picks. Like there's like flaming hot Cheetos. Um, average Joe's from Dodgeball and everything. I'm like, man, these are so sick. Yeah. And then uh, it's like, oh, we we could all like do something. And then I come across like Mr. Incredible uh, costume, and like we look, and I'm like, oh shit. And like, d- uh, like you know, my son's like so obsessed with um, the Incredibles and all. And then it's, it's cute because like you know, he points to me. He's like, Mr. Incredible. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, I'm your daddy. Yeah. yeah. So like, and then so we uh, we got the costumes, and I was like, oh hey. Why don't we like hide them and then it's like on Halloween we dress up and everything and like be there right in front of him and then like we'll give him his costume and he'll that's be cool. super stoked, right? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, you know, like it was a great idea, but then like later on that day, like he found out, like, like he found the costume and he's like, "Mommy, like I was like, mommy, I'm like I want my Incredibles costume, please." And all, I was like, uh, "Damn it!" Man. Yeah, okay. What like, a kid yeah. ruin everything. I'm just kidding. But dude. but he like but he loved it. So I'm oh, like, yeah. like, yes. Well, I hope you guys have a good time. Have fun. Right. Enjoy the family. These are great times with the kids. Uh, actually, there's uh, we're going out tonight, Evan. We're going out freaking drinking. So I hope out. you guys have a great night. Yeah. I'm jealous. That's gonna be a good time. So as we always do, <laughs> let's get a let's go on three. One, two, three. Let's, let's go. go. Bye, everybody. And that's it. Thank you for listening in, everybody. I'd like to thank our sound engineer who makes this podcast happen and makes us sound very good, Stephen Clark. And to our first sponsor, 8-9 Barbers. Look good, feel good, be great. Come get your haircut at two locations, Long Beach and in Orange, California. Your appointment can be booked at 8-9-Barbers.com. That is E-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-E-B-A-B, excuse me, B-A-R-B-R-E-R-S. 8-9-Barbers.com. Again, look good, feel good, be great. Check it out. It's my barber. He is the man. Thanks, everybody. Bye.